So first of all, a uh, uh, big uh, hello and uh, welcome to all of you who are on the phone and of course also to our uh, uh, speakers. And uh, um, tonight uh, we're going to, uh, I mean, the, the, the topic of the webinar is related to measuring and accelerating uh, team uh, agility. So this is uh, part of a series of uh, webinar which uh, we started on uh, 6th of uh, January. And today we are going to have the second uh, event uh, out of uh, four. Uh, before to uh, leave the floor to the uh, speakers that you, that you see uh, on the on the webcam, uh, I will take some uh, some time uh, um, to uh, talk to you about a little bit about the uh, PMI and also to give you some uh, more technical information about the. Uh, the PDU for this uh, webinar, and as well, I will give you a, a short and uh, brief introduction uh, about uh, our two speakers of uh, tonight, Sally Elata and uh, Mohamed uh, Alfaki. So uh, I'm going to share a presentation, which uh, I hope you uh, can see. Okay, so. Um, this uh, webinar, uh, of course, is uh, uh, I mean, is brought to you by the Project Management uh, uh, Institute. That uh, uh, I mean, as you know, is the uh, world uh, leader in terms of uh, project management, and uh, um, yeah, as an organization based in uh, USA, which is a world leader, of course, in uh, its field, and has the goal to uh, advance the uh, project manager profession uh, worldwide. Of course, uh, also in uh, UAE, there, are the, there is uh, this uh, goal, and eventually in uh, UAE, there is a Project Management Institute uh, uh, chapter, which is run 100% by uh, volunteers who have a passion not only for, uh, for project and project management, but uh, also for networking, education, and uh, personal and professional uh, development. Um, at the end of the day, the, uh, let's say all the activities uh, done by the uh, PMI UAE chapter really depends uh, on the way you guys uh, interact with, uh, with, uh, with the chapter. So we really appreciate your uh, contribution in participating in uh, this event. And eventually, we are also proud uh, to be in the top five worldwide in terms of uh, number of members who are part of the, of the chapter. And uh, I mean, we are also uh, proud and happy to share that our community is growing day by day. Being part of the UAE chapter means also to have some benefits from it. First of all, in terms of networking, the UAE chapter gives the opportunity to collaborate both with industry and as well with universities and organizational and uh, other uh, organizations. Also, there are uh, some advantages and benefits in terms of uh, uh, leadership learning and uh, uh, knowledge uh, sharing, but uh, as well, uh, there are advantages and benefits in terms of uh, uh, career growth and uh, in uh, participation uh, to uh, events like uh, it's happening uh, today. Of course, uh, it's also important uh, to uh, remember and to thank the, uh, the sponsors of the PMI UAE chapter, which are the Ministry of uh, Presidential Affairs and the Dubai Health Authority. And uh, as well, it's important to uh, mention our partner, our partner IIL uh, Middle East. And uh, in case you want to uh, find and get uh, more information about the uh, PMI UAE chapter, you can either visit our uh, website, um, pmiuae.org, or you can follow the uh, pages on, on, the, uh, on all the social media. So Instagram, uh, Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, and, uh, and uh, YouTube. Uh, regarding the... Uh, the webinar of uh, tonight, the participation of the webinar will provide you one uh, technical uh, PDU. Of course, uh, uh, in order to be able to get the PDU, it's important that you uh, attend at least 80% uh, of the webinar, and it's also important that you are uh, you will participate in the active way. So don't leave uh, your uh, I mean don't leave the webinar on the background and work on something else because. Uh, you will not, uh, this one will not allow you to get to the uh, PDU. 
and eventually the PDU will be uh, will be automatic, automatically claimed for you within uh, 10 to 15 uh, days. So coming to the core topic of tonight, so the measuring and accelerating enterprise business agility. As I mentioned before, we have two speakers for tonight, which I'm happy and proud to let's say to work with for tonight. The first one in order of talking is Sally Elata. Uh, Sally, she's the uh, founder and the CEO of uh, Agility uh, Health. She's a frequent uh, um, keynote uh, speaker, and she has uh, more than uh, two decades of experience in uh, enterprise business agility uh, transformation. And uh, uh, Sally, she's going to be, uh, let's say, supported by the uh, other speaker of tonight, who is uh, uh, Mohamed uh, Al-Faki. Mohamed is a business agility and agile uh, consultant which uh, work with many executives and uh, also with many managers to lead the transformation. And in his career, he trained and coached uh, more than 600 uh, people. And uh, uh, for the future, I mean, to all the participants, in case you want to speak in uh, any of the upcoming uh, webinar, you are uh, free to contact our event team to the uh, email address that you see on the uh, on the screen, and uh, you can uh, propose your uh, yourself for a future uh, webinar. So. That's it from uh, uh, from my side. Thank you all for uh, uh, listening this uh, short uh, presentation, and uh, I really hope you're going to enjoy this webinar. And uh, now I leave the floor to uh, Sally. Thank you very much. If you can make me presenter again. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay. Let's see um, if I can share my full screen here. Um, and I believe that you guys can see the screen. Does that sound right? All right. I think we're in. You can see my full screen. Yes. Thank you, Neda. All right. Uh, good evening uh, to all of you uh, in the Middle East. Uh, it's very nice to be back here with you. Uh, Mohammed and I were able to present last time, um, and our topic last time was really about measuring and accelerating enterprise business agility. So if you did attend that, that was really kind of going at the 5,000-foot view and thinking about my objective as an organization, as a company, as the government, is to really transform at the enterprise level. How do I do that? What does business agility even mean? And what are all the things that I need to invest in? Today, we're going to take you a little bit deeper and focus on teams, because we really believe that high-performing teams is the heart of a high-performing organization. Uh, so we're really going to dig deeper into the topic of team agility and how do I really create high-performing teams? How do I measure them? What metrics should I look at? Um, when I look at this data, what do I do with the data? Because data, I've always said that measurement with no action is worthless data. So if you're just trying to assess and send surveys and collect data, but you're not doing anything with it, then you're also wasting everybody's time. So very excited to be here with you. Again, um, they've already introduced me, but I'll just go over it very quickly. Um, I started the company Agile Transformation Incorporated about 11 years ago. We've changed our name recently to Agility Health. Um, we are known for three products that we offer. Um, Agility Health is our measure and grow platform. So it's a lot of the measurement, the radars. Um, AgileVideos.com is our e-learning platform, so this is where you can learn um, Agile at scale across your entire organization. And EBA is the Enterprise Business Agility. It's a strategy model. It's basically what I covered last time with you, which is how do I assess where am I at the enterprise level and how do I um, come up with a plan to move forward. Uh, for those that know me on the personal side, I'm also the founder of Sudan NextGen. Um, as many of you know, Sudan has been going through a lot lately. Uh, and we've successfully been able to overthrow a dictator, a 30-year dictator. So I started a nonprofit organization called Sudan NextGen, um, and that has really started a very big movement for all of us in the diaspora to help the country. So, Mohammed, it's Hello, everyone, and good uh, good morning, good evening, uh, where you are. Uh, this is Mohammed uh, Taki. I'm um, the business agility consultant and the regional uh, consultant here with uh, Agility Health. Um, uh, I'm um, certified uh, uh, enterprises in agility, uh, certified state agilist, uh, scrum master. Uh, I have been working in the agile field uh, 
uh, actually um, maybe 60 years uh, till now. Um, I work with, with uh, private and, um, and non-profits and also public uh, organizations to help them to, uh, to adapt Agile and transform to their business agility. So, Sally, we have uh, to start. Awesome. So, I wanted to give you a quick refresher. The refresher is very important, which is that an organization that's on the big journey needs to invest in team agility. And what we're going to talk about today is how do you measure team agility? How do you help teams help themselves? Because when you're trying to do something across hundreds of people or thousands of people, you're never going to have enough agile coaches and enough coaches to help every single team. So we're going to talk about using the data and understanding where teams are at, but letting them help themselves grow and then developing internal talent. Team of team agility is about scaling. So uh, we talked about this last time, whether you're using DAD or LESS or SAFE or Enter, uh, Scrum at Scale, it doesn't matter as long as you are using a scaling methodology so that you can plan across multiple teams, you can bring in DevOps maturity um, and leadership and culture. Organizational agility is all about product management and portfolio management, which is maturing, becoming outcome-based focused, outcomes and OKR, um, and then thinking about product and discovering on product, also changing our value stream structure and beginning to assess and mature our digital transformation. And then operational agility is about bringing HR, sales, marketing, legal, finance, audit, all of them have to be in this enterprise agility journey. Why? Because our objective is really to um, anticipate customers' needs, disrupt before being disrupted, and, and becoming a learning organization. So that is the journey that we took you through last time. But now I want you to think deeper. Um, what are the challenges that you are facing today within your organization? from measuring and assessing the maturity of your team and helping them grow. So I'm going to give you guys a minute, again, as I did last time. And if you can contribute in the chat, what are the challenges that you're having assessing and understanding where are my teams are? Are they mature? Are they not mature? And then helping them actually mature and get better. What are some of the things that are getting in your way? All right, Tanazi has said communication issues are getting in the way. Um, Sindian says it's culture. Rana has said it's the mutual trust between the team members. Yep, those are very good. What else? Uh, Hanadi says assistance tools for team growth. So. Um, how are we actually helping them grow? Even if we know where they are today, how can we give them enablement tools? Uh, Nadia says it's the mindset of the members. There's no growth mindset. It's a fixed mindset. Vivek says it's communication and trust between and inside of the team. And Me Too says it's tracking of teams' inputs. Very good. Very good. Those are awesome. Very good. Thank you for thank you for engaging and participating in this. So. I'm going to give you some of the, Nassim, thank you, communication and people, and then the silos. The silos is a huge problem, by the way, Nassim. This is definitely a big one. Um, so the formula, how do we accelerate the journey towards having team agility? Our secret formula is learn at scale, measure at scale, grow at scale. That is what allows you to accelerate. So when we talk about learning at scale, we're saying that you really, you can't just afford to only have 20 people go to a training class and another 10 people go to another training class. If you have hundreds of people in your organization, many of them, if not all of them, should understand new ways of working, agile ways of working, cross-functional collaboration, teamwork. And so we highly recommend that in addition to the training courses that you're offering, that you think about rolling out what we call learning at scale, uh, whether you use agile videos or use your internal videos, how can I help hundreds of people understand these new ways of working? And what's really been very popular for us lately here in the United States, we work with the with different large entities. Um, they've been rolling out videos, but they've also been rolling out 90-minute webinars at scale. And those webinars, you can have hundreds of people attend them, like the one that we have here. 
um, inside of the company, but it's role-based. So there's introduction to Agile. What does it mean to be a Scrum Master? What does it mean to be a product owner? But they're really, what does it mean to be outcome-based planning? Those webinars are trying to create the culture of learning at scale. And we always like to start with learning at scale because when people don't know, they don't understand what's going on, they don't want you to measure them. They're afraid of measurement. So we believe that learning should be first because people feel comfortable, they don't feel threatened, they understand. Um, then you go into measurement. And measurement at scale is where are we today, which is measuring a baseline. You're always going to hear a lot of executives and companies say, what's my baseline? My baseline is where am I starting from? Some teams are healthy, some teams are not healthy, some teams are mature, but where am I today and where is it that I need to develop and grow? And then you do need to invest in growth. A lot of companies also, they measure, but they don't really do much with the data. Um, they analyze it, they come up with recommendations, but they don't focus on the growth aspect of actually helping the teams mature um, and having the managers themselves take a very active role in removing organizational obstacles. Those three are the secret sauce for accelerating your journey towards business agility and team agility. As I mentioned last time, there's a lot of different things we can measure. Today, we're going to focus on the team health. Last time, I shared with you all of the radars that are available, but today I really want to just talk about what does it mean to create healthy teams? Um, and the most important message that I shared last time is that if you ever use the data from these measurements to punish or reward the teams or their leaders, even their managers, then you will never see the truth again because all of the data can always um, be gamed, right? All of the data can be gamed. Mohammed, did you want to say something? I hear background. No, you just, uh, I think you have some issues. Did I cut off a little bit, my audio? Okay, no problem. Um, so let me know again if I cut off. But what I was basically saying is that um, measurement should never be used for punishment or for reward. Um, thank you, Nadia. It looks like I'm, uh, everybody's hearing me fine. Measurement should never be used for punishment or reward. If you give the managers a bonus, because all their teams are high, mature, and healthy, then all of them will start to game the system and show you next time that they're all high-performing and healthy. If you punish a team because they were honest and they were truthful and they said, this is where we are, um, and you take that data against them, then you'll never see the truth again. So the most important thing, and please trust me, we are experts in the world of measurement and, and continuous improvement. The, the most important thing is to not use this data the wrong way. Um, and that is a very big requirement that the only purpose of this is to the growth mindset, as one of you said. It's really to help the teams actually mature. So um, the measurement challenges that most organizations have is just clarity and alignment. So number one, what does good look like when I say, we have healthy, mature teams. What's your definition? What's my definition? When we say we have really good leaders, really high-performing, you know, agile leaders, what's the definition of that? And so those radars that, that I showed you, and I'm going to show them to you in more detail, the only purpose of a radar is to give you a visual representation of what does good look like, what does healthy, what does high maturity really look like. And so that's the purpose of the definition of the radar. And then we need to actually use those radars to actually measure and really grab the data and see where are we today. But as you'll see us talk about, the measurement is not just done as surveys. We really want them to be facilitated workshops, which means that people are coming together, they're answering the questions, they're seeing their results, they're having a conversation, and then they are actually making an improvement plan. They are committing to action. They're saying, okay, this is what we're going to do to get better, um, and this is what we need from our leaders. Yanni, there might be a couple of things that we can do to help ourselves grow. Maybe we need to plan our work better. Maybe we need to estimate better. Maybe some of our roles are not clear. So those are all things that we ourselves can manage. Maybe we don't have trust between the team members, and we need to resolve some of the cultural issues inside and be open and create team norms. But maybe we also have problems that our managers need to help us with. Maybe we don't have the right tools, not the right training. Maybe our skills um, are not available. So that is what we mean by we have to identify improvement items at two levels, team level and organizational level. So what are the three metrics that matter and how do we measure them? So I'm going to share with you here that 
a lot of what I see people do today is they try to measure performance. And performance is good. Performance is output. Um, how much work did you get done? What was the quality? Was it fast? Um, what's your SLA and time to market? Um, our customer. So all of those are great because those are all performance metrics. They're very output oriented. What I'm going to challenge you today to think about is also adding maturity and outcomes because those are the three metrics that matter at every level of the organization. Maturity is what these radars will show you. It's the practices, it's the behaviors. It's how well are we doing um, in team health and DevOps and digital? What's our maturity? Performance is what's our output. Outcomes in OKR is what's our results, and those need to be business results, impact results um, that your actual senior leaders are paying for. Like, this is why I'm doing what I'm doing. So even, you know, producing more work faster, well, that's great, but if it doesn't hit the market, if it doesn't help me win, if it doesn't help my customers come back more often, then I'm still not achieving outcomes. I'm just getting work done. So I'm going to play a short video for you here. Uh, and then we're going to come back, and Mohammed, if you can go deeper into the team health radar um, after we watch this video. So let's go over here. Let me expand it. And let me see if I can play. Hello there. I'm Sally Alada, and before I tell you about Agility Health, I want to share with you why we created it. Agile teams have no consistent way of measuring their team health and performance. Now, if you only have a small group of teams, this really isn't a big deal. But what if you have 20, 30, or hundreds of Agile teams? How do you know how they're doing from a performance and health perspective in a consistent way? Some teams are healthy, some teams are getting there, and some teams really need help and attention. Once a team understands their health holistically and visually, they'll identify many growth areas they themselves can improve on. They'll also identify where they need help from their leaders, and we call these organizational growth items. We also needed a way to assess the health of program teams, product lines, and portfolios, and get an enterprise view of how we're doing overall. So what is Agility Health? Agility Health is an agile assessment and organizational growth tool designed for companies that are adopting or scaling agile and want visibility into the performance and health of their team. Through years of working with Agile teams, we found five key areas for measuring team health. A healthy Agile team has clarity on their vision and purpose, measures for success, clarity on their short-term, mid-term, and long-term plans, and clarity on their roles and expectations. A healthy Agile team shows performance, measured by the confidence of the product owner, confidence of the team, and their stakeholders. Their performance is also measured by predictable velocity, time to market, value delivered, quality, and their response to change. They should also have a healthy leadership team, made up of their team's facilitator, technical leads, product owner, and their managers. A healthy team has a healthy culture, measured by happiness, collaboration, creativity, accountability, trust, and respect. And finally, a healthy Agile team has a strong foundation for agility and a solid team structure. So how does the team health assessment work? Well, the team goes through a deep dive retrospective meeting once a quarter. It takes about two and a half hours and it's facilitated by a certified Agility Health facilitator. The output is a team health radar that you can expand or collapse or view the detailed radar plotting the current responses and variances between the responses. The team reviews their strengths, improvements, and impediments and then build their growth plan with the most important areas they want to improve on for the next quarter. Items that they cannot resolve themselves are labeled as organizational items. What's cool about this is in the next quarter, they can compare their two radars to see where they got better visually. Multi-teams can be used for program, product lines, and even portfolios, and allow you to roll up several teams into one radar view and analyze common patterns of strengths or improvements. The most important part of multi-teams is hearing the team's voice by seeing the actual organizational items that they rolled up and adding them to your program or product line's backlog so they can actually be addressed. 
This was just a glimpse of Agility Health. We're really excited about how Agility Health will help teams and organizations grow in a measurable way and achieve business agility. All right. So thank you for watching that. Let me just turn on my video again. Um, I just covered in that video, what do we measure for team health? So I'd like before Mohammed jumps into the detail here, what resonated with you across this radar, this team health radar? What are the things that you believe are important for your teams right now based on the challenges that you're seeing? Is it the clarity? Is it the performance? Is it the leadership? Is it the culture? Is it the foundation? Let me see some responses here and then we'll take it over to Mohammed. Which one of those, we call them competencies, do you think are critical for you? I'll give you a minute. Culture, leadership, clarity. Wonderful. All of them. <laughs> Anuj says all of them. Nitu says clarity. Rana says culture. Okay. Yep. And you know what? That's the same conversation we had when we were building this radar several years ago. We needed all of it. Like we felt like these were the most critical aspects of team health. So Mohammed, if you can share, you work with a lot of teams and you've helped hundreds of them. What what do you see here? And then I'll, we will go to the other slides as well. Okay. Um, um, actually, um, as you said, um, the team uh, agility health radar um, is made of. Let's let's get uh, get uh, dig deeper. We have the five dimensions here. We have the diplomas. We have the leadership. We have the culture. We have the foundation. We have the clarity. Um, these five dimensions we have some uh, sub dimensions under the, the the main dimensions that uh, we mentioned. The five ones, um, and uh, we have set of competencies. Set of competencies under the sub dimensions, and each competency has one or two or more questions related to, to, to this competency to assess um, the maturity of the team, the, the, the assessment uh, items that we need to be um, uh, as, as you said, the team has a clarity of the purpose, has the clarity, this is the team, the, this is the health team, has a clarity on the purpose, on the purpose has the clarity on the vision, has the clarity on the planning for the long term, the, for the short term, and, the, uh, and also has the culture, as, as so many of the attendees uh, mentioned. Healthy, healthy culture is, 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 very, is very important. And what, I'm, what, I'm, what I want to say here, uh, we have a correlation between these five dimensions. Um, some of them actually impact others. For example, if we have a problem in the performance and there, there, there is some low uh, percentage uh, in the performance dimension, um, we get some questions, how to improve the performance. Actually, the performance is improved by the culture and the foundation. If you have a good culture in your team and, you have, and they have a solid and foundation uh, uh, about the agile concepts, agile principles, agile uh, practices, they, they, they honestly will, will do better in the performance. Um, um, at the same time, the leadership has a correlation with the clarity. The leadership has to... I'm going to take you to that slide, Mohammed. You're talking about correlation. Go ahead. Yes. The, the leadership has to to mention clearly, to share the vision, to share the purpose of, of the product, of the, of the services, of the strategy of the organization. So when we see some, um, some low um, trends in the, in, the, in, the, in the dimension, that's actually because the leadership, they don't support or they don't provide the clarity on, on, the, on, on these top dimensions that I have mentioned. Um, can you just go to I, can, uh, I can cover some of these. I just wanted you to know what Mohammed said about um, form being impacted about foundation. We saw from the data that predictability, if you really want your teams to be predictable, there are three areas that really impact, which is stability. If you keep moving people in and out of the team and you don't let them stay together, they're not going to be predictable. If you don't know how to do short-term and mid-term planning, 
they're not going to be predictable. And if you don't have technical excellence in automation, the team cannot deliver in a predictable way. Also, quality. If you really want the team to have quality, you can't burn them out. Sustainable pace means that the teams are not working 80 hours per week, 70 hours per week, working so hard, because when teams work too hard, too fast, and you force them to put so much stuff out into production very quickly, quality becomes an issue, and then also technical excellence. So this is just a visual of what some of the stuff that Mohammed was talking about. Um, so I'll take you back here, Mohammed. go ahead. Yes, okay. And actually, um, I just want to mention that, uh, Sally, here in the Gulf region, we actually have the turnover very high between the organizations. So uh, the, the employee who, who, who shifts from, from uh, or move from one organization to other organization, maybe they have some uh, time of the region of, of the organization that they, uh, they work on. So uh, from, from here, we can uh, drive some actionable uh, growth uh, plan for the leadership to, 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 to address. Um, this is another view that you can see here uh, for the um, The dots you can see here is the actual answer that is provided by the participants uh, for, for this uh, session. As Charlie uh, said, it is not a survey, guys. It's, 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 um, it's a facilitation session. Um, we, we group the, we gather the, the team members, uh, the stakeholders with the, team, with the leadership team in one room and we facilitate this session for uh, two and a half hours. And during this session, everyone has the right and has the access to the platform, um, using his own uh, mobile phone on uh, tablet or even uh, his laptop. And um, the dots here, as I said, is the actual answer by the, the first part. The shading, uh, as you can see, the shades that between, um, between, between the radar here, as, uh, as you can see, for example, um, in the, let's say, uh, in the vision, uh, in the vision uh, here, this is due to the variance between the answers between the same members. So here we have we have a beautiful discussion between them because we have so many so many answers different answers in the same uh, dimension in the same competency. So here you can you have you have a beautiful um, and, and very uh, useful uh, conversation between your team. The red line you can see here is the average is the average between the answers that that um, that we have. So. The overall uh, answers we get from here, what is the overall level of this team? What potential relationships does the data suggest? This is the correlation that I, I mentioned earlier. What the action that the improvements will provide uh, the greatest return? Because the philosophy behind these radars um, at each level, at the, uh, the team level, at the team of each level, at the enterprise level, it's that uh, the growth mindset. As all we know, agile is about uh, mindset, and the initiated mindset is the growth mindset. So we enable the growth mindset by uh, not just assessing the maturity of the team, but also by suggesting the growth uh, actionable plans for them that can um, uh, take by themselves at the team level, or uh, that can rule up for the leadership team to to, to address um, in the future. Sally, if you have any uh, addition here? Yeah, what I wanted to do is I wanted to show them what we've learned about the questions themselves that are in the assessment, because we've decided to move to what we call crawl, walk, run, fly. Um, when we first started this about six years ago, trying to assess the health of teams, we used to ask them a simple question, like, for example, under trust and respect, do you respect your other team members? And what we realized, sorry, let me go back to the real one here. Uh, what we realized is, unfortunately, a lot of people, um, they will actually overrate themselves. I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but most teams that are new to Agile, 
um, they overestimate where they are. And I think that they do that not because they are trying to lie. I think that they are trying to compare themselves to what they used to have before. And so when they look at what they have now, now that they're cross-functional, and they look at what they had before, they basically overrate. So what we ended up doing, and this started to happen several years ago, is, for example, roles. Instead of just asking, um, are you clear on your role? You know, from a scale of one to 10, please tell us if you're clear on your role. We went to this kind of a question. So crawl, walk, run, fly. Do you guys understand that? Crawl means I'm at the very beginning. Walk means I'm starting to walk in my maturity. Run is I'm getting very better and fly is I'm like, you know, I'm doing awesome. So crawl is we are not sure who does what on the team. And I am not even confident that we have all of the right roles that we need. So if I'm answering and I agree with that question, then I will answer a one or a two. Walk is I do have clarity on my role and what's needed of me, but I'm not clear what other members on the team are doing. Okay, so that's a walk. Run is we've created clear expectations of what we need from each other, and we now are actually measuring and having very confident conversations with each other. So I'm showing you this as an example because um, – all of them, like, for example, goals and outcomes. This one's also my favorite one because it shows you if teams, when they say that they're outcome-driven teams, are they really or not? So crawl is we do not really have any defined goals or measurable outcomes. Walk is we do create goals, but they're very output-oriented. They're not value-focused, and everybody on the team isn't even aware of them. They haven't even heard. Why are we doing what we're doing? Run is we do create outcomes but we don't track against them, which is good. So now they do have outcomes, they're value driven, but they're not tracking. And then fly is they set short term outcomes, they're measuring against and everybody on the team can describe the business value. I'm sharing, I'm going a little bit deeper because I want you to know that we have had to work very hard before we realize that asking only simple questions is not enough. We have to have a crawl, walk, run, fly for each one of these items. So taking it back to you again, Mohammed, I just wanted to clarify that point. Yeah, maybe uh, some people ask about uh, where we come from uh, this work fly and run. You can mention that, Sally, because it's, 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 it's actually from the partnership with plants and also. Sure, sure. So uh, please remember, we are definitely experts in the Agile field. I'm very proud that I was one of the experts that um, uh, helped to build the PMI ACP, the Agile Certified Practitioner with PMI many years ago. Um, and I shared a thought about Mohammed, your background noise is very loud. If you can yourself, thank you very much. Um, so think about where these questions came and they have been updated every year is from a large group of agile experts and practitioners from our customers themselves. And then we review them every year and look at feedback from the actual teams uh, that are using it and from the large companies to basically improve them. So the team, especially the team health radar is our most mature. It's our most studied questions. And then we did hire some organizational psychologists that also um, uh, organizational improvement that also did validity testing on the questions. So they, they basically reviewed the questions to see if they're compound, if they're complex, um, if they would have repeatable confined results. Uh, so lots of work has gone into these questions, and I always tell people don't underestimate them. They look simple, but we've had to sit down and talk through them across at least 50 to 60 people, um, if not more, over the years. Okay, thanks, Ali. Um, uh, the, t the team help uh, session is actually a um, strategic um, retrospective. It's not a tactical retrospective. Uh, what I mean by tactical retrospective, because people may say that we, we, have, we have this retrospective meeting after um, in each sprint, after each sprint, uh, what is the differences between between this respective meeting that you are saying and this is this respective we use to do every sprint, whether the sprint length is a couple of weeks or, or more? Um, then, firstly, it's a strategic because two things. Uh, the first one is that it takes the overall picture of the of the whole performance during the whole period uh, of the quarter. So um, we talk here about three months, four months, and we do that weekly. 
not just every two weeks. And uh, also because it takes the, the, the whole picture about about many dimensions, many competencies uh, at, at each level, from the team level uh, um, to the leadership le level. It covers also the cultural perspective, the technology perspective, which is the technical, uh, maybe technical related uh, more than more than the, the cultural perspective. So it's a strategic perspective. It's not a tactical, uh, it's not a tactical uh, perspective. Uh, for, for, for guys who, who, uh, who are familiar with SAFE, um, actually, you can do this every PI at the innovation um, uh, space um, during the, the BI, you can, you can take this assessment. <laughs> yeah, during your INA. Sorry, sorry. During the INA, during the inspection, because whether you're using DAD or SAFE, they always have a time where you're supposed to be pausing at the end of the quarter or at the end of the PI. And in SAFE, for example, it's called the INA, the inspect and the adapt. Um, and so that's a four-hour session that uh, SAFE already tells you that people should pause. And that is when they can do all these assessments and review the results together. But even if you're not using SAFE, if you're using DAD or any of the other methodologies, you really should be pausing at the end of the quarter anyway to say, hey, I don't want to look at a tactical. I don't want to just have a one-hour meeting. I really want to see, looking at this last quarter, what is going well and where should we improve and what's the biggest bang for the buck? Where is it that we can invest our time and our energy, even across our management and leadership team, and really leapfrog ourselves next time, really accelerate performance in the next quarter? So those are the kind of conversations we're trying to have here is really – conversations that will really accelerate the maturity of those teams and their performance. Yes, and actually, um, we, we, can, we can talk about the implementation of, of, the, of, uh, of the assessment. Um, it, can, it can be taken for individual teams and can be taken for, for many teams. And here we have one facilitator that will facilitate the whole discussions for the, for the for all teams, say uh, 10 teams, and for each individual team, you can have your uh, individual facilitator that is satisfied by agility help to facilitate the discussion within his team. So it's flexible. It can work for, for small teams, and possibly it can work for large organization with multiple teams that come together in one big room. Uh, in, uh, Wonderful. And this is just a summary for those of you that come from a lean background. Um, in the world of lean, there's something called DMAC, or some people call it DMAIC, which is in lean, we know that you need to define, measure, analyze, improve, and control. And so this is the process that we're recommending, is that one, you have to define what does good look like, and that is what those radars and the crawl, walk, run, fly. And then you need to measure the current state and figure out where you are today. And then you need to roll up the data and analyze. What are the patterns? Am I starting to see that several teams are struggling with culture? Am I starting to see that our management team is the issue? Am I starting to see that planning is the problem across many different teams? And then you basically improve by committing to team growth items, organizational, and you control this process by repeating it over and over again and measuring performance against it. And we've already covered this part over here. So, Mohammed, if you can speak a little bit about the growth portal, and I'll actually show teams, like, if I want to improve quality, you know, this is like, you know, a lot of teams, as we said, might not have the, a coach available and they really want to improve quality. We want to be able to help them from that specific competency, be able to identify. And it doesn't matter what resources you have in your company. My recommendation for you is always tie the learning and the resources to the actual area that needs improvement. Does that make sense? Um, so what does healthy look like from a quality perspective? What does unhealthy look like? What are some recommendations that those teams can actually perform in order for them to improve quality? These could be expert-led recommendations, or they could be internal recommendations, like ones that other teams, like another team that has improved quality within my company, this is what they've done. So I always like, I like to see the expert recommendations um, and maybe ones that are coming from your internal COEs, your centers of excellence, but you also want to hear the voice of internal teams and what they've done. Um, some people learn by 
videos. They like watching. And so sharing with them short videos on quality would be very helpful. Some people like learning by reading. So give them some articles, but not a lot. You don't want to have hundreds of things over here. You just want to give them three to five articles. And then I always say, finally, when all of the resources that you've gathered is not enough, you want to give them direct access to internal coaches or external coaches that can help them with quality. This model that I'm showing you over here, which is the concept of I'm measuring, I'm analyzing and having a conversation, I'm deciding to take action to improve, but you are enabling your teams to help themselves grow. You are giving them the resources, the videos, the recommendations, the community of practice, the mentors that can help them. This is how you scale and this is how you accelerate a transformation. If your idea is that I'm going to have to have five or ten Agile coaches and they are going to have to go and train hundreds of teams and help all of them directly, then that is not a scalable model. We here in the United States have tried that for years, and it's not scalable. What ends up happening is because it's not enablement-based. Like, giving an Agile team initial training is good, but what are you leaving them with after you go? After the coach has left them and they've gone to another team, what does this team have? So, um, so that's what I wanted you to think about today is how do we create a scalable model for measuring, improving, but enabling continuous improvement for teams themselves. And I do see um, Nassim over here uh, gave me feedback that DMAC is not used in lean process manufacturing. It's a methodology, um, is an expansion on uh, plan, do, uh, check, act developed by Marwa. Thank you very much for that, Nassim. I really appreciate that feedback. Thank you. So going back over here, Mohammed, this is just, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about self-improvement. Anything you want to add here? for uh, teams that itself. Yes, actually what, I, what I'm going to say, because uh, I see the time is, is running, um, whether you are someone, whether you are a judge, whether you are a leader of organization, manager for, for your team, um, I'm sure we have many of, of the attendees um, um, in one of, of the classifications that I mentioned. Um, as Scrum Master, one of, of, of your responsibilities is to improve the implements of, 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 from, for your team and help them get better. Ag the agility helps team assessment for, for the team, as we, uh, as we presented here, helps you to get insights um, in your team. If you are a giant boss and you go to the organization and you need to help them, you, have, you, need, you need a quick assessment to know where are the impediments, where are the struggling um, in. And you need to build your coaching backlog so you can use this um, grid that help you to, to assess the team and um, build the growth plan uh, based on their feedback, on their actual feedback. And I'm, I'm going to say here, it's um, you have you have to know that, and you have to emphasize that uh, all the answers are anonymous. So this will create a safe environment for them to give you a real and honest feedback that can actually help you and help the organization and help the team himself to improve and get better. Um, Thank you. I think that's very practical. And what I want to do now before we go into the case study is I want to do a quiz. Uh, so for those of you, I'm going to try to see how good are you <clears throat> at analyzing a radar without us giving you a lot more information. So I want you to look at this radar here, the one on the right side. Uh, I want you to imagine that this is a real assessment that's come from within your company, and those are seven to eight teams under a program, and this is the result of what you found out. What I'd like for you to tell me in your chat is what do you see? What are the areas that are concerning you? Do you think there's anything? So let's just start with that. What are the areas that concern you? What, what are the patterns that you see here? And then we'll talk about root cause analysis. But let's just look at the data. What are some of your um, insights from just looking at this? Every line is a different team. All right. Hisham says culture and clarity. Um, our issues. So Hisham noticed over here that we've got culture, and it looks like clarity specifically around planning is an issue. Very good. Uh, Nadia says leadership. Nadia, which part of leadership are you concerned about? All of it or some of it or 
What are you starting to see? Janesh also says culture is an issue. Hadib says leadership is an issue. Performance, yep, great. So now let me ask you guys, um, can you see that the product owner, the product owner is really low, the scores. One of the, one of the correlations that we've identified, and Mohammed talked about this, which is culture impacts clarity. Remember, those are correlations. And um, foundation, uh, sorry, leadership, that's what I meant to say. Leadership impacts clarity, and foundation and culture impact performance. So what I'm trying to share with you here is that there is a very big chance that because leadership is struggling, the scrum master, look at the, I mean, there's only one team that has a strong scrum master here, but look at the scores over here. Product owner is not engaged. They're not doing their job the right way. They've got a lot of maturity. That is probably what's impacting. So from a root cause analysis perspective, um, the, the, the impact that leadership has has a direct impact to clarity. The other thing that you're seeing is culture. If I had this level of a negative culture, I would work on that first because we've learned that there's no way you're going to improve a team if there is a lot of negativity and the trust and respect is gone. I like that would be one of the first things that I would focus on right now for me would be the leadership and the culture. Like those would be where I spend my time because everything else will improve if I focus on leadership and culture. But now that I have this data, I can actually use the data as a way of making the decisions of why am I going to, you know, focus on leadership and culture. And I can also look at this team, this team that's blue. This is a very mature team. They've got some really good, um, uh, they've got some really good health data, even though I would say that they're also struggling with some of these issues. But maybe we can have some shadowing opportunities. We can have them tell stories, do webinars, and share with other teams what do they do. How have they been able to improve performance? So another part of the analysis that's important is, one, identifying patterns. Where am I going to do training? Where am I going to do coaching? Where am I going to invest? Number two, which teams can help other teams? Right? That's what I'm looking at the data. I'm not just looking at the data to say, oh, I can see some insights. I have to make decisions. And the decisions is where am I going to spend my money and my effort? So where, where am I going to deploy? If I have coaches, where am I going to deploy them? Okay? So that's, that's why we look at this data. And then we decide what are we actually going to do to improve um, from this perspective. So um, several people here have asked me for my contact information. My very last slide will have our contact information, but here's my email address because uh, people are tagging me with that. Let me just kind of give a final thought over here. If you want your teams to be aligned to business outcomes, if you want your teams to really achieve your OKRs, you have to assess them, hear the problems that they have, and remove their obstacles. Does that make sense? It's a two-way street. Leaders and executives and managers want teams to achieve outcomes. Perform. Give me work. You know, great. You have to listen to our voice. You have to hear what the problems are, and you have to remove them. Organizational agility is a two-way street. That's why I'm showing you this picture to show you that teams are going to identify growth items. They're going to work and try to improve, but they're going to identify organizational issues that managers and coaches should remove, and enterprise growth items should be addressed by senior executives and leaders. In my opinion, um, executives and leaders have to shift away from giving me status reports kind of mentality is give me, please give me fancy PowerPoints and status reports, and they have to shift to leadership agility, which is how can I help you? Where do you have an impediment? What can I address for you? Um, and I know in the Gulf it's probably still very command and control and leaders are more top down, but I don't want to make that assumption. But here in the United States, we've had to work very hard to convince leaders that they themselves have to change. They themselves have to listen to what teams are saying and remove obstacles if they want higher performance and if they want really higher outcomes. Um, so I hope this message, you've shared this video with uh, with many of your other executives. I'm going to cover this very quickly, just so we can have some time for Q&A. This is an organization here. It's a very large bank in the United States, and they took 90 teams, um, basically, as a case study. They've been doing Agile for three years, so those teams are actually very mature. But they have been doing Inspect and Adapt, only using PowerPoint and Excel. And their executives and leaders said, look, we, we're, we're shutting down the budget. You can't hire more teams. You need to do more with the teams that you have right now. I need you to increase your productivity. So this is their radar from their program, one of their program teams. 
Um, and this is where they were able to identify, so this is a real screenshot, some of the challenges and the issues that they were having. Um, they also pulled a lot of the words that the team said, and a lot of it was related to clarity, lack of clarity, lack of planning. Um, they said the plans change too frequently. We don't know what we're doing. We don't understand why we're doing. We throw away work all the time because you keep changing. We're starting and stopping. Um, and what was beautiful, I remember the executive, the senior vice president of this bank saying, I've heard some of this stuff before, but now we can't ignore it because the data is driving it. And there's so much of it now. Like we can see that all of the teams are saying the same thing. We have to take action. And I love it because that company is actually a very data-driven company as a very large bank here. Um, and so what they did is they identified, they grouped all of the issues and challenges into these buckets. Um, they actually identified 900 growth items. 386 were at the management level. The rest of them were at the team level. Um, and you can see here the number of what we call OGIs, organizational growth items that were identified. Uh, I'm very proud of this company because they actually did what they said they're going to do because I also took a screenshot from their Insights dashboard and they actually removed 917 growth items at the team level. At the management level, they really did remove 391. And the executive level, the executives themselves rolled up their sleeves and addressed 39 items within six months. This is all within six months. The result was really good because they had improved by 21.9% over time. Um, the maturity uh, improved by 10%, the performance, which is quantitative data. So this is qualitative and this is quantitative data. Their average is what we call your overall agility. But I remember that the, the lady that was running this transformation said, Sally, the, the teams have said that they're more predictable than ever before. The backlog, which is the work uh, doesn't have churn anymore. Churn means that it's constantly changing. It's actually ready. So when the teams are ready to start the next quarter or ready to do work, all of their work is ready for them to pull. They don't keep changing it in the middle. Their work is aligned to strategy. And this was my favorite number, which is the amount of deliverables that they had in 30 days increased by 267. So they've almost doubled, if not tripled, the amount of work that they used to produce. So I just wanted to show, because we're talking about data, it's very important to actually end with a real case study of a real company and how they've used this information. Um, at the end here, I just wanted to leave you before we go into Q&A. Um, just before, before, before you go into the, to the last slide there, Sally, I, I just wanted to, to mention that this digital um, dashboard that you are seeing here, um, it actually can be, um, I mean the platform, uh, Agility Health Platform can be integrated with with uh, many uh, platforms that we use in the development and the management, um, the team management. I mean, Jira and um, other other tools that whatever you you use actually, it can be integrated uh, with uh, with this uh, um, dashboard and get the data uh, actually at some time. Yeah, that's a very good point because integration. You don't want to have um, products that don't talk to each other. Okay, my final message for you is um, one, invest in learning. If you're new to Agile, join agilevideos.com as an individual or as a team or as an organization and start accelerating and learning at scale. If you love what I just shared with you, feel free to get certified. Mohammed's here invested in getting certified as an Agility Health Facilitator so that you can begin to run these assessments. And if you um, love these slides, feel free to download them from here. I will also share this link in the um, I will share this link in the chat right now, but let's take one question, Mohammed. Do we have any questions that we could answer here for the team? Um, I don't see any questions. I think there was a question that I saw earlier. Really yeah, let me answer this one question, um, which from Hisham. I need to rephrase it. How do you think team members Conflicting characters like detailed leader, co coordinator affect the team health and performance according to your health radar. Um, you know, conflicting characters. I'm not going to say that is a bad thing because you want to have a you want to have different characters on the team. It is their ability to resolve conflict that impacts their team health. So I might be very detail oriented. You might be very visionary. You know, when you're not detail oriented. Okay, that's okay. We want mix of people. But I would say Hisham, it's do we have team norms and do we know how to resolve conflict? 
If we can have team norms and know how to dissolve conflict in a respectful manner and not talk about each other behind each other's back, then that creates a healthy team. So the diversity of people is great, but the ability to resolve conflict is what's more important. Uh, need to, how do I get more certified Agility Health? It's right here. So right on this slide deck, you just go to agilityhealthradar.com slash get certified, and, and that is the website. Um, Nassim is asking, is the practice of formal Agile project management a prerequisite for the health radar, or do you have an application that we're, even if they don't practice Agile? We actually called this radar the team health radar because, as an example, one of our very large banks here, they do this across waterfall teams as well. We change the question slightly if it's a waterfall team, so we, it dynamically changes. So, no, it is not just applicable to Agile teams. Everyone, thank you so much for your time. I hope that you really enjoyed this session, and I hope you got a lot out of it. It will be recorded and sent to you. Um, Emiliano, do you have anything else to close with? Uh, well, Sally and Mohamed, on behalf of all, I want to thank you all for this great session. Actually, I want to invite uh, all the participants to make a big uh, clap for you guys. It was uh, really a great, uh, a great session. And uh, thanks a lot. And uh, I mean, if anybody has uh, any other uh, question, maybe we can take a couple of minutes uh, more. Otherwise, uh, uh, I mean, tell them Mohammed to share their uh, contact, and I think you you are free to contact them directly. Thank you, thank you all. It was a great time. I hope you all enjoyed, and uh, see you next time. Bye, everyone. Assalamualaikum. Thank take you. Care. Bye. Take care. Stay safe. Bye. Bye. Bye.